my gosh, Corey, this is going to be a really good show because here's the question. What is God's will? And most important, how do we know it? That's a tough one. And what are the characteristics of a godly woman? You and you. Yeah, you too. Stay tuned. Hello to all of you. Welcome to Sister to Sister. We're so thrilled to have you because there are five of us here sitting around the table and we answer the questions from you from our hearts, pretty much from a biblical point of view. And we are missing Amy and Flo today, but we're thrilled to have Angela and Tiffany with us. So yes. jump in, girls. <laughs> we will. All right, good. I know you will. <laughs> but this question is really kind of Proverbs 31-ish. And here's what it says. <laughs> what are the characteristics of a godly woman? Because I think we're godly, but what do you think? Yeah, but we don't have all the characteristics. <laughs> no, no. Maybe if we blend ourselves all <laughs> together, yeah. we could come up. Shake it up. Yeah, <laughs> shake it up. That's true. That's you true. Know, we're not cookie cutters. I think that's what we show a lot of people that mm -hmm. view that we are very different personalities yes. and backgrounds, which is awesome to me. Um, but I want to focus on one because it's really bothering me lately and it's bothering me and myself. The, the vicious, volatile nature of the female and the male mouth leads me to Proverbs 31 too. When she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instruction with kindness. Mm. So Luke says that out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth That's is speaking. Right. So we really have to think about our words before we say them and we have to fill our hearts and minds with God's word, with his correction, with his instruction and stop before we start. Oh, that's so that good. Is good. So a godly woman's quality would be Speaking wisely. Speaking wisely. Or don't speak time. at all. Right. Or just zip it. That's yeah, right. that's really good. Yeah, good. Yeah. What do you have, Corey? Well, I was really focusing on um, this passage when it was read um, at Mother's Day uh, that the jobs, there's, there's so many jobs that she had in this passage of scripture. And it really hit me because, you know, there's all the sort of like, you know, things like she's trustworthy and she's, you know, there are all these like, you know, very like lovely things about mm -hmm. her in there. And about, then, are you talking about Proverbs 31? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Pro I'm Proverbs yeah. 31 mm -hmm. woman. And, but then there were all the jobs that were in there. And yes. I was just like, that really hit me because in biblical times, those were not necessarily things that women were allowed to do or that they were praised for doing. And this is something that is being praised as being a godly woman. Mm, there right. were, you know, she works with willing hands. She seeks out supplies. She sees mm. a vineyard and she buys it. She rises at night. She provides for her workers. Mm. She, um, her lamp doesn't go out at night. She makes, she sells, she delivers, she teaches, she oversees. These are all yeah. things yeah. in yeah. Proverbs yeah. 31. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. These are things that, uh, you know, weren't necessarily um, brought out or taught to me as a young child or a young girl about Proverbs 31. It, were, it was all the other things like she fears the Lord. She's generous. She's trustworthy. She's precious. And those are all important <laughs> things and yeah, characteristics yeah. of women. We should be all those things. Yeah. But these other things, these jobs, they're important That's too. Right. Yes. Yes. And I wish that those things had been spoken into me more mm -hmm. when I was growing up as a young girl. And I want to speak those into women too. Right. Yeah. I think you better go look up Proverbs 31 if you haven't so far. Yeah. What do you have, Tiff? That that yeah. Oh, oh Tiffany, no, go one of you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Angela. Go no, ahead. That's great. I love that. And I love that you pulled that out, that right. she buys and sells. Because I think so sometimes good. women, mm -hmm. if they're not at home with the children, they feel less than, right? But that that's a godly characteristic. I love that, Corey. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I always go to Fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5. Mm -hmm. You know, peace, patience, love, joy, mm -hmm. kindness, mm -hmm. gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Like that to me, those are the characteristics. Yeah, that you want to have. Yeah. 
Guns. Right, teach to your Good. girls. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Tiffany. All right, right my with, turn. With your boys. Yeah. All right, <laughs> my boys. Well, you know what? I thought about, and I mentioned this about my mom. In addition to Proverbs 31, I looked at my mom. My mom's a godly woman, and she taught me a lot. And one of the things that she taught me was to be gracious. Mm. And there were times when people did her wrong. And I didn't understand why she would get, she was just so great, give them a second chance, still mm -hmm. invite them out, wow, still be hard. there. And I just really, I said, mom, why do you do that? You know, this is what they did to you. Well, she said, you know, God did it for me. Mm. He was gracious for me, that's, to me. Good, you know, so many times, over and over and over again. And so I learned that from her, you know, and, and for me before it was like, well, if they did you wrong, then just forget it, yes. you know? But, you know, when God lives in you, there's something that says, hey, listen, be gracious yeah. and give them another chance. Well, That's good. Just by you saying about your mother, mm -hmm. then just a thought came into my yeah. heart. Yeah. What kind of a godly woman mother do I want to be as an example on, to yeah. my children. That's so right. that, that's, that's what right. got to me. And the truth is, mm -hmm. I just want to be known as a woman on her knees mm -hmm. for her children, mm -hmm. the good. praying mother. Mm -hmm. And that to that's me it. is a characteristic that's of right. a godly woman. Okay, yes. well, this yeah. is really good. That. Girls, mm -hmm. kind of deep and kind of good. Okay, this is a nice one. When people talk about God's will, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. And how do you know? This is a tough one. It Corey, is. This, if you can answer this one like you did last one, what do you have? <laughs> I loved your answer last yeah. time. Well, there's God's obvious will, and that Which you is? can, that is what's obvious in the scriptures, mm -hmm. what he's, he lays out, and he says, you know, it's his will that none should perish, right. you know, without knowing him, mm -hmm. his will that, you know, that he doesn't, you know, want sin, that, you know, there's just mm -hmm. all the things that are obvious in That's his good. word. Mm -hmm. That's I God's see. obvious That's right. will, that we can go to the scripture, we can read exactly what is God's will, yeah. okay? And then there's God's mysterious will. Mm, and those good. are the things that are unknown to us, the things that we that need to be revealed to us that we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. And wow. the, the thing about God's mysterious will it leads to my favorite scripture, and I've, re I've shared this verse before, Romans 8, 26. Yes. Likewise, the Spirit it, it helps us in our weakness. For yes. we do not know what we ought to pray for. Yep. The yes. Spirit himself intercedes for us with wordless groans. Mm -hmm. wow. So we don't know what God's will is for us, for our lives, so that, uh, that unknown will. The Spirit is interceding on yes. our behalf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is so beautiful to me. That is why I love that yes. passage. Yes. Because we don't, we don't necessarily know what God's will is for our future. Um, we know that He has a future planned for us, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been revealed to us. Yes. And it's just yes. so comforting to me to know that the Spirit is interceding on our behalf, yes. even when we don't know what that, that will is. Whole, that yes. could be a whole show yeah. on, really, on prayer language, really. etc. Okay, what do you so have good. a scripture for me? Well, God's I get, will. I'm going to have a scripture through my life experience. John 7 says, those who are willing to do God's will will know whether the teaching is from God. Hmm. So what do I mean by that? Because we commit our work to the Lord, it says, and God establishes our plan. So we commit it to Him. But we have to first be willing. And I'm going to give you an example. When I, my parents said, go on to school. No, I want to get a car. I want to get a job. So there I was, applying to law school and applying for a job in hospital administration. Mm -hmm. And I was at my wit's end which one should I do? I'm scrubbing my mother's floor because she's working hard, paying for my college. And I dropped to my knees and I said, Lord, if you want me to scrub floors the rest of my life, I need to know what your will is. I just want to do your will. Yeah. Then the phone rang for uh, the job. Wow. Then the phone rang. Wow. The, the professor, Shula, I'll, uh, Professor Shula, I'll never forget him. You know, young lady, you got the last interview on the last day of interviews. And your LSAT scores aren't in yet, so I got to wait for those. And I'll look at them and we'll see. Boom, got them in, the door opened. When we are willing to say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want at that humble, broken place in our lives, 
his will comes gushing through. Come on, come on. That's good. That is good. so good. That's good. That's you know what, awesome. Roxanne, uh, your answers today are everybody terrific. Mm -hmm. But I have a question that this is really good. I'm, oh, gonna, I'm just going to ask you this because I know you probably have scripture for me. But there's a question here. It says, I want you to name two truths and one lie. All right, I'll be real quick. You're okay. I want your scripture. Okay, God <laughs> loves you. Jeremiah 31.3, truth. truth. I have loved you with an everlasting yeah. love. I've drawn you with loving kindness. My mother would repeat that all the time, mm -hmm. and it could be from her Catholic upbringing. I went to Catholic church, and I heard the song. I'm like, wow, God, you do love me. Yeah. Truth, Jesus is God's son. Matthew 17.5, bright cloud comes from heaven. Peter, John are there on the mountain and uh, Moses and who Elijah. appears? Elijah appears, thank, thank you, you sister. Mm -hmm. This is my beloved yes. son in whom I will please listen to him. Awesome, Truth. lie. Now the oh, last one's the a lie. lie. God will not forgive my sin. Uh. Mark 11, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive mm -hmm. us of sins, that sin, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So, do you have, do you have truth and lies? Two, I do, but I, I did it from the game yeah. perspective. Okay, two what, truths and what, a lie. That's what Tiffany has Yeah, too. there's a game. So let's play a two game. Two truths and a lie. Okay. All right, we're mm -hmm. going to play a game. Mm -hmm. Okay. You right. have one and then you have one. Then. Okay. I have one, sorry. you have one. Okay, that's, no, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Give me a truth. Okay. Maybe. No, I'm going to no, give, give you my three statements. We got it though, we got it. It's okay, Kat. Go, go. Okay, I've traveled to every uh, continent except Antarctica. Okay. I can sleep anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I have hosted a radio show. So we have, we're gonna guess the lie. Yes. yes. Okay, What's so. the lie? Um, I'm gonna say you can sleep anywhere. I, I think that's the lie. Okay. I'm gonna yeah, say I'm you've traveled to every country but Antarctica okay. is Continent. a lie. Continent. Continent. Oh. Continent. Oh, continent. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she said continent. All right, go ahead. It's a sneak question. It is. Okay. Okay. What do you I'm think? I'm going with the sleep okay. too. Okay. okay. I was going to go with that, but let's me, let me shake it up a little bit. <laughs> shake that up. Shake it it's up. This, uh, no, the sleep anywhere was number two, right? Yeah. What was number three? That I have hosted a radio pro show. Okay, I'll take that one. Okay, okay just to be no, that's it's, true. It's the Antarctica one. Yeah, wow. yeah. Go. Oh, 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 I can sleep anywhere, <laughs> and I have hosted a radio show. There so you, you were right. I was right. Oh, okay. Not Kathy. always am I right. That's why but we I was listen right. to you, Kathy. There you go. That's right. Okay. Okay. Tiffany has All this. All right. So I have two three. truths so, and a lie. So I have twin brothers, twin uncles, and twin brother-in-laws. That's the first one. Okay. I was the top swimmer on my swim team in high school, and then I also played the violin for years. Which one do you think? Ooh. Oh my God. Wow, I stumped you, you all. You did. Wow. I could see okay. you doing all those you things. You can't make up that twin stuff. I mean, I think the twin stuff is true. Yeah. And okay. I don't, you, you're not built like a swimmer, you're built like a gymnast. So I'm going <laughs> to say, hey, you know what, though? I always wanted to be a gymnast. That's so but funny. I think my you dream, I think it's true. over. Oh, I, I, have think a, I have a question. What did you <laughs> swim? <laughs> oh, there's no question. No, no, I, 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 I was a swimmer, so I have a question. What, what did you swim? Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm going to go with violin. Violin. I'm going to go swimmer. I'm going twins. I'm going swimmer. Kathy, you win the prize. Yeah. Oh, she won again. I don't even know how to swim. <laughs> She doesn't look like a swimmer. <laughs> she didn't know. answer but my question. You know, be a gymnast. She didn't yeah, answer my question. But what, I think my... what did she swim? Because oh, that's true. I that was a swimmer. That's the lawyer in you. Yeah. All right. See, now, Kathy, we wish you would have been around when she was a child so you could have directed her right. in the purpose yeah. and the will of God. Exactly. Maybe. It was a gymnast. Right. <laughs> this show is all wrapping together. But as I end this show, I'm going to tell you oh, oh, two truths and a lie. These are not, these are from God okay. gave me okay. this. Let's okay, see. God the gave truth you this. Is, <laughs> she did hear God's I do, She did hear God's <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who lives in me. Amen. That is so true. Yeah. Amen. As a song, Jesus loves me. This I know, truth. A lie, things are never going to work out. Mm. Mm. That's mm. a lie, because they are. Mm. We love you all so much. And again, these questions then bring this to your heart. Two truths and a lie. Go ahead and do it. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back to wrap this up. Oh. Wow.
welcome back. You're watching the sisters here on Sister to Sister, and we have more questions for you. And this one, this one is like a godly question, and here it is. It's it's a scripture. John 4:24 says, "God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth." So it goes kind of along to the other questions we all had today. What does worshiping in spirit and truth really mean? Can you do that for me? I love it. I think that, you know, this is Jesus at the well with the yes. woman in Samaria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that when he's saying this, he's, oh, he's essentially right. has said, you know, they don't know who they're worshiping mm -hmm. truly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're not really worshiping me in right. spirit right. or in truth. And I love what they say about David in, in scripture, um, talks about David being a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And so we know that he desires for us to worship in spirit and, to tr and in truth. And to be a man after God's own heart is to be that worshiper. And to me, David personified complete and total transparent with the Father. He was completely, he laid his soul bare. There was nothing hidden between him and God. He took up that space where there had been so many generations, everyone stayed concealed and hidden like Adam and Eve. But David bared his heart and said, God, when I don't feel like it's fair, I'm telling you, I don't see it as being fair, Lord, like this is, and all of that was true worship because it brought him back mm -hmm. to the heart of the Father to say, but God, I know you're faithful. Mm -hmm. I know that despite what I'm going through, I can still stand and trust you. And so to me, that's what worshiping in spirit and in truth is, is that in the depths of my being, I'm being real with God okay. and I'm worshiping from yes, the truth it. to the one who is ultimate that's truth. So good. That's, that's, that's yeah. so good. See, that's that the truth. I just wrote down the word authentic. Mm. Yes. So as you said, being real with God, so good, so yes. good. Yeah. Who has something? You know, the, the woman at the well was a Samaritan. Yes. Right. And she said to Jesus, and I love that she asked him questions. Yes. Now don't forget that the disciples were astonished he was talking to a woman. Yes. And I thought and he's, yeah. that's yeah. my, God, he's revolutionary. <laughs> yes. He's talking to a woman and he's giving her the, and he's answering her questions and letting her speak and say what she wants. But she said, the Samaritans or my family worships on this mountain. mountain. Mm -hmm. Jacob built a well. He gave it to um, Joseph. So it was a holy place. Jacob's well was holy. Mm -hmm. But she said, you, which meaning I guess Jews, worship in the temple. So where is the right place right, to worship? Yeah. And Jesus said, it's neither. <laughs> wow. I am spirit, I am truth. You worship me anywhere, not just in the temple. It's not ritual. If it is ritual, it's gotta come from your heart. I'm not denigrating rituals because they have come yeah, through the right, heart of yeah. the priest or the pastor or whoever it might be. But it is, as my sister said, with the heart and it's gotta be true. Yeah. That's right. Does it align yeah. with right. God's word? Mm -hmm. Is somebody yeah. making you do or, or wow. pushing you to yeah. do something mm -hmm. that doesn't align yes. with God's word? Yes. Well, that's so good. It what do you think, worship I, and truth? I, uh, going along with that, it mm -hmm. has to be engaging both the mind and the heart. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it can't just be all an emotional experience yes. because that's I right. think a lot of that's times right. worship, we get caught mm -hmm. up in the emotions yes. mm -hmm. and there has to be a grounding in the truth. Mm -hmm. So it has to be, you know, doctrinally sound. It has to be, you know, it has to be, grounded in the scripture, like you said. Mm -hmm. And so I think you, you can't just get caught up in the emotions. Yes, it, it has to be, you know, you have to be moved by the spirit and moved by what's in your heart. And yeah. that it has to have both aspects mm -hmm. of it. It has to be engaging both your mind That's and your great. heart. And I yep. think that Jesus was giving us the mapping for worship How right there. Yeah. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's right there. And it doesn't matter where it takes place. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's just, it's so beautiful that he lays it out in this simple yes. scripture yes. you know it doesn't have to be this big you know debate it's it's right here in this one simple scripture and that's how Jesus works he just yes. gives it that's to so us good. right there mm -hmm. I love all kinds of worship though I mean I like loud oh, yeah. wild rock and no. roll Jesus yes. but I also like authentic and quiet mm. Jesus and it can be any of those <laughs> yes. forms yes. what do you have to you know just really quick I think everybody I mean these are awesome answers you yes. know and to kind of just bring it all together I think the one word 
word is, and you said it, Kathy, is authentic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've mentioned yes. it too, the authenticity yes. 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 of it. Yes. And I think just to add, just to add a little bit to that, um, I would say, it, you know, kind of like a precursor or something that goes along with that authenticity is asking the Lord to give you a clean heart. Yeah. As you're Ooh, entering into worship, on. as you're entering in to, to praising him and, and, yeah, and just great. spending that authentic time with him, I think, because a lot of times we, we come with some heavy stuff yes. in our hearts. Yes. Come on. Come you on, know what right. I mean? Whether it's anxiety that we talked about, yes. whether it's offense, whether yes. it's unforgiveness, where, whatever it may oh, be, wow. yeah. asking the Lord to really cleanse you of that. And yes. Yes. Speaking of the clean heart, and I'm going to go to the next question. Sometimes I'll be in worship and I'm thinking of someone else. Else. I'm praying for mm. their sin, right? Time, blah, blah, yes. blah. And then God just speaks to my heart. Well, how about just you? Yeah. yeah. Why on, don't you it. just be with me yeah. right yes. now That's instead good. of worried about the other? So yes. cleanse your heart. Yes. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Great yeah. stuff today on Sister to Sister. Yeah. And this is good. This is hard mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. How do I respond to people who think the Bible is just fictional nonsense? And I do have people in my life that yeah. do that. Well, I, let me read the scriptures. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18, it says, it yeah, it says, for the word of the cross is foolishness, mm. foolishness mm -hmm. to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So it's just, it's foolishness to them. Yes. So I right. would say the first thing that I would say, don't argue. Yeah. Don't argue because it's not gonna, you're not going to get anywhere. There was one, I have a quick story. There's one particular person that I was trying to show them something in the word of God. It was very clear. There was no ambiguity whatsoever, but they said, I choose not to believe that. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it was more like a buffet for them. Mm -hmm. I yes. choose this part of the scripture, but yes. I don't want that part of the scripture. Yes. And you know, the Bible, it's the inerrant word of God. Yes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's, there's, it's all truth. Yep. And so for people like that, you got to let the Lord do what yes. he wants with yes. them in the timing that he yes, wants with man, them. You can't true. make them, you know? So yeah. I would say, just pray, pray but, and intercede. But Tiff, at least that person believed some parts some, of the Bible. Yes. There's yes. people, mm -hmm. and I think this question goes to it, that really I had a person say, mm -hmm. You could quote the Mother Goose or ABCs to me. It means nothing. Yeah. So that's, and then you have people that have all the answers. All the books were written, mm -hmm. all these years apart, and there's all kinds of factual. Our producer would know them it's all. It's historically yes. accurate. Yes, yes, yes. It is. I don't have those facts, but I'm with you. Just don't yeah. argue. And yeah. I have to say, you don't approach the Bible as fiction, but a historical pathway. Yes. The Bible is not a recipe book. Mm. This is how you become a, follow all these things and we're all gonna be cookie cutters. Mm -hmm. It's historically a, a, a roadmap, mm -hmm. genealogy, yes, yes, cities, places, events, mm -hmm. people that really lived, eyewitnesses mm -hmm. to the facts. So, and when it says the just live by faith, that's what my sister's saying. Mm -hmm. It's an element mm -hmm. of faith mm -hmm. when you receive the historical facts and the historical facts lead a pathway to Jesus. That's right. And that's what I would tell them. We study law school like that. Mm -hmm. We didn't you study, study everything like you that. You didn't study this is a crime, this is a tort, this is a contract. You study case by case mm -hmm. historical facts that lead to truth and the law. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I feel so strongly what Tiffany said is that you can't fight with people. It's, it goes it's back to- It's not a fight. It's literally, how do you study any subject in school? It's by people who previously lived passing on the things mm. that they wrote. Did anybody oh. ever meet the people that wrote history books? No, they don't know those people, but That's they are fun. believing oh. the books that were written. The historical, you know, records that were passed along from generation to generation. So that's a different that's approach. Right. Because yes. even people that that's don't it. have a relationship with God, they can't, they can look at history and say, okay, and that's correct. That. Yeah. And they oh believe that. Gosh, yes. Well, this is a whole nother show again. <laughs> yes. We could do. The True. sisters are so full of it today. <laughs> Full of good stuff. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. So stay right there. We have a scripture for you. We always end sister to sister with a scripture. It's been such a good show today. Yeah. I just have.
loved all of our topics and we have just had such lively conversations. I wish we could go on another half an hour, but we do always end with a scripture and today's scripture is from the Psalms 86, 11. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. When I think about that a concept of a, an undivided heart. It kind of makes me think of that old cartoon with, with the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other shoulder. But you know, the devil isn't that obvious. You know, he sometimes works with that concept of two truths and a lie. He'll whisper some truths and mix in a lie in the middle. Don't let Satan whisper into your ear those lies and those tr mixed in with those truths. Seek out God's truth in your life and his will for your life. And if you need to call our number today, someone will speak those truths into your life today. That was so good, Corey. And Roxanne said earlier that the Bible is the pathway. It's not a recipe book, it's the pathway. And so is this scripture. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. Because these girls make me a better Kathy. See you next time.